What are we in? March meeting to order. Yes, we are. All right. First item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Everybody have a chance to read them? Typically, you do introductions. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That's not on the agenda. Yeah, we should put that on. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's. I'm going to put that on. Let's put that on the. Yeah, let's go ahead. Put all, right. that agenda. To all future agendas. Thank you. Let's do introductions then. Don, I'm looking at you first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, introduce yourself. <laughs> oh, shoot, I'm still plugged in. <laughs> Don <laughs> Smith. <laughs> Brian Burke. Lisa Norman. Brian Watt. Bob Burns. All right. And Scott Archer Steph. Thank you. Now we can do approval of the minutes, right? Yes. Excellent. All right. Hopefully everyone's had a chance to read them. Is there a motion? I move we approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, I mean it's approved. Okay, our next item is citizen comments on issues and items not on the agenda. Do Everybody's here for the uh, agenda. Excellent. Not. There we go. Nice. All right. Well, then let's go to general business. And I am very pleased to turn this over to Scott and perhaps introduce us to our visitors tonight from the Natural Resource Committee. Correct. Well, one is, one is from the committee and one is the, uh, a staff person that works for the city. Some of you may know. So Pete Walter is uh, a planner <coughs> for the city. And Brian Boyce, I said that right, Brian, right? Yes. yes. Uh, is the chair of the Natural Resources Committee. So actually, I just invite you guys to come up to the speaker's table. and. Um, and then while you're doing that, I'll give the committee a reminder about why we're doing this. In case you've forgotten or weren't uh, here when we've discussed this previously, we um, actually, the Natural Resources Committee, NRC, um, initiated this discussion <coughs> and, and suggested that um, we establish some communication in a more formal way. The, the Natural Resources Committee actually has in their bylaws the um, uh, that that it is it that they're required to meet with PRAC once a year or supposed to meet with PRAC, which is kind of <laughs> weird because we don't have that in our bylaws. So maybe that's something. <laughs> maybe that's something that we talk about, either fixing or or whatever. But uh, so they initiated the conversation, um, and I, I think um, Brian and Pete will probably tell you about what the Natural Resources Committee's objectives are and what they do. And um, I think the idea was to establish some communication talk about potentially whether um, you want to meet on an annual basis and how you want to do that, how you want to structure a meeting if you do that, but what kind of agenda items you might discuss where there are uh, mutual issues, which, which I think there are a number of, and, and just kind of generally have a, a discussion. So, uh, and also, um, just while I'm kind of wrapping up the introductions, um, uh, Pete Walter, our, uh, one of our city planners is also the, the lead staff on the South End concept plan, which Bob has been doing a great job of reporting back to us. As he's our PRAC representative to the South End concept plan <coughs> committee. Uh, um, and Pete, I think, was maybe, and Pete and Bob, maybe while you're here, we wrap up the NRC item. And it's not on your agenda, but I think it'd be appropriate to just have uh, Pete and Bob kind of give an update on that since we've got Pete here anyway. So. Um, with that, I think I'll just turn it over to you guys to let you kind of explain the rest of what you want to talk about, and then, and then I think the idea is just to make this conversational and and uh, kind of see where where it goes. So. We go from here. Right. Okay. Well, I'm Brian Boyce. I promise my name is spelled differently than anyone else up here. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, yeah, we have a, a seven-person board, and. Uh, we have a variety of uh, very good people on there, and uh, some of whom would be good to present here on issues of mutual interest. And uh, I guess uh, I don't have our official uh, <coughs> mission statement or anything with me, but uh, we're basically here to review issues of natural resources rather than parks per se, and that would include things that are outside of the purview of parks like street trees, the heritage trees, and so on. And, but often there is overlap because parks are filled with natural resources. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so um, some of the same subject matter, you know, we could be <coughs> sharing information and ideas real easily. Um, you know, there's issues like volunteerism, uh, 
invasive plants, um, attitudes towards the parks, and so and so on that um, uh, would be of interest to you guys as well as to us. So, and uh, you want to add anything to that, Pete? Yeah. Um, uh, we also the planning department administers some of the overlay district requirements, uh, such as the natural resources overlay district, which affects. Um, properties that are both uh, privately and publicly owned, such as Clackamas Cove um, and uh, End of the Oregon Trail. Uh, both of those properties are entirely within the Natural Resources Overlay District, and as such, the Natural Resources Committee is responsible for advising on development activity that occurs in those areas. So those are some areas where there's mutual, mutual overlap as well. Um, in addition, the, the NRC has also been working on updates to the street tree list. And uh, we've also been looking at the uh, regional plants list for Clackamas County, Cla uh, sorry, Port, uh, Portland and Metro area. Yeah, the Portland uh, Metro area, yeah. Uh, as, an, as an update to that, uh, so that we can reference the most up to date lists that we uh, can for. Uh, citizens and developers that need to have access to that information. And that, that includes parks as yes. well as everybody else, because the same list pretty much would apply in parks. Mm -hmm. So it, hopefully it's become fairly comprehensive. There's a lot of plants on there. Sometimes I think they should add something like availability mm -hmm. uh, to that list, because some of the stuff on there, there just isn't many of them out there. But, but many of them are common and, and uh, easily acquired. The city's done some nice planting lately. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to commend them on that, the park crews, for that. Yeah. Um, um, I'd like to um, uh, point out that we have uh, several members that could do presentations here. Uh, we have uh, Bob Roth, who also works in this uh, South End plan for <coughs> the parks, um, also is working on volunteerism and trying to develop some ideas in that direction. And uh, I've personally asked people in parks when I'm in there, you know, if they're interested in volunteering. And there are people out there that would like to do that. And that's uh, a potentially really good resource. I always point towards Mary S. Young Park as a place where a lot of volunteer activity is happening. The, uh, Last year, they were up to 20 acres of ivy removed, for instance, and uh, they're taking out invasive trees and shrubs both, as well as the perennials, and uh, that's all a real good thing. And uh, it's all entirely volunteer run, and they've had really good luck in getting that to develop there. It's, uh, it's a unique situation because the city is managing a state park, and that gives them a, maybe a little better funding. I'm not real sure how that works out, but, uh, but they certainly have the people interested and involved, and, and that's something that could really benefit Oregon City and its parks if uh, that could be developed, starting with the people that live near the parks, you know. That's, but anyway, I think Bob would be a good one to talk to you about that in the future if, <coughs> if he would uh, be interested in that sort of thing. Um, Shaw Spady is um, developing information on the dark sky idea where you design lighting to reduce light pollution of, you know, and wasting your energy lighting the sky, you know, which um, I had just found out that PGE is replacing many of the street lights in Portland, something I think was like 70 percent, uh, with LED lights that are dark sky friendly, meaning they all reflect that's downwards great. and not shining upwards at all. So that's going to simplify our job as far as getting that uh, into the city. But we're planning on recommending something, uh, some volunteer program or something like that to uh, encourage that idea. And Shaw Spady is the one developing that. It was, been uh, interested in that for quite a few years. And uh, she's got quite a bit of information. So she'd be another possibility. Um, <clears throat> one of my pet things is, uh, is uh, invasives in the parks. And uh, it's sort of a sporadic handling of that. There's things that are poisonous. There's things that are ecologically damaging. Uh, and, but there isn't a comprehensive plan in the <clears throat> parks to deal with those like there are in most of the park systems in this area. <clears throat> And uh, Metro is big on that, and uh, we can easily generate lists of things that are appropriate. Oregon City has uh, many areas of rocky soil, which has its own set of invasives, like Tree of Heaven, which 
is really the tree from hell as far as uh, dry <laughs> soils because it grows where oak trees grow and grows about uh, eight or ten times faster. And uh, so it's a real, and gets just as big. So it's a real problem tree. It's not a problem on wetter soils. But uh, um, I think that the park system has many good horticulturists, but um, they may be a little bit short on people that are real aware of natural resource issues and uh, natural area management. So that's, that's another issue that I, I see is needing to be addressed over time. And it's a matter of education, our personnel. Um, you know, we do real good <coughs> understanding horticultural implications of plants, but not the natural resource uh, management skills that, that uh, have become more commonplace elsewhere. So that's another idea that uh, could be presented and discussed. And yeah, I would just add that um, the NRC is made up with some really skilled, there's some skilled people on it. Um, and to the extent that we can start to leverage partnerships with uh, other advisory committees as well as other agencies, um, uh, we're starting to be able to do that more and more. Um, an example of that would be the Ar Arbor Day event that's coming up on April 17th where we're collaborating with the Clackamas Soil and Water Conservation District um, and the school district and uh, Oregon Department of Forestry to put on that event this year. Um, so, uh, I think what Brian's saying with respect to invasives is something that we still need to pursue um, uh, with the help of agencies like Metro and uh, Greater Oregon City Watershed Council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Soil and water conservation so would be a lot of help. And we've, we've got a member from that mm -hmm. uh, agency on our board, so uh, we can easily get them in, in on anything that we want to do. Mm -hmm. So, Excellent. Do you guys have questions? I'm thinking about water board park. <coughs> when you say soil and water <laughs> preservation, I'm, I'm thinking soil and landslide. Is that, am I right? Yeah. That is uh, actually a perpetually active landslide area, right? And it's there's basically no way of really stopping it. But fortunately, it appears to be to me to be contained within the park. But um, uh, there's uh, the old asphalt road. When I first saw that place, you could still drive through it. You need a pickup, but you could get through it. Now there's a six foot drop off. Mm -hmm. Every time it's a wet winter, it drops a, somewhat more. Might be a few inches, might be a couple of feet, but uh, uh, but that whole area. There's pressure ridges. Uh, we're actually thinking of petitioning Dogami to declare it as um, a significant educational geologic resource area, which would be something that you can rarely do, but it is unusual. You know, you have a paved road that. Yeah, it's mounded up, and you look uphill, and there's a mound, and the trees are going out this way because, for some reason, that area has underground pressure that's pushing up the mm -hmm. soil, bending the asphalt where the road is, and it continues a long ways down that mm -hmm. mountainside. So who are you, pet again, who are you petitioning? I'm sorry. Uh, Dogami, the Department of Geology, basically, for the state of Oregon. Okay. Uh, it, there's Nothing official has been done yet, but... Uh, it, it's certainly an unusual and very educational area. Right, and I mean, it's something, again, this is what I, one of the intersections that I would see with this mm -hmm. committee here is that we've talked about and, and of course, been up to, to uh, that park several times and um, thought about brainstormed ways uh, in our own, you know, limited knowledge about how to maintain that as maybe a path or you know, to make sure that we're still able to use it and and then again get the information out to the public mm -hmm. that there is a you know, safe path or whatever up through Water, water Board Park. So yeah, I, I see def definitely I see a intersection between our committees there. Certainly mm -hmm. we wouldn't want to be going in some direction while you're going in a different one. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we need to keep it open. It's, you know, people are getting through now, but you know, if it dropped a couple of feet again, you know, you'd have to do something there. Yeah. To uh, and it's going to be a perpetual thing. So that <clears throat> is what you call a very slow-moving landslide, but it is moving uh, from that area and on down. And uh, then you know, it's never going to be a road again, but it certainly can be a path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, but you've got unusual geologic features there, that whole cliff face with the basaltic andesite columns and, and so on. Plus, just the boulder fields are mostly covered in ivy now, but yeah. uh, that needs to be dealt with also. There is a, a very strong volunteer group already in place there uh, at that park, uh, yeah. but with some assistance from the park department, you may be able to get rid of at least a section of <coughs> ivy to expose the boulder fields that are there, which again are very unusual. You, yeah. uh, it's because it's a landslide area that it's that way. And there's also a bit of history is on the far end of Waterboard Far from the Arbor, uh, Armory. The, the uh, Armory. Um, there's Quarry Street because there was quarry activity, but nobody seems to know what that activity was. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm sure that some rock used in building Oregon City was taken out of there. But what's the history? Who knows? You know. But that's that's for another committee. But I'd like to see. An answer to that question. Interesting. Thank you. Just, just a yeah. question. You mentioned you have a request in to. It sounds like the uh, state. What are you requesting? Oh well, we're we would like to make the request. It hasn't been done yet. We're trying to find out if they have uh, a venue for that already in place. Uh, what it would be is to have it basically declared a significant geologic area because of the slow moving landslide and the educational opportunities that that presents. Mm. Uh, because it's expressed real clearly because you have an asphalt road circling through that area. And uh, so it's not just a pile of rocks, it's asphalt that's been deformed. You, you know they didn't lay it that way. It was nice and evenly graded when they first put that in and now it's you know a humped up heaped up area with trees around it that are going out from this hump that actually extends up and down the hillside. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be for repairing anything, it would, it would be uh, for other Not purposes. necessarily. There, it may, uh, I'm not sure, that's what we haven't found out is what programs, if any, do they have in mm -hmm. place? Um, or is it just recognition like a heritage tree? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so. As far as it's been determined? Up to date, is it a safe area? Um, That's one of our conversations. Safe, was yeah, that, we want to promote it. It's mo most of the time it would be safe, but I would not go in there during uh, high it? rainfall yeah. periods because you do get rock fall, and the ground could move. Uh, but I mean, you know, the extreme rainfall events where it rains for days is right. Um, you know, a few years back they had to push a big, bunch of big boulders off that road that uh, fell down in from, uh, you know, we're right in that steepest part of it. And they, of course, just pushed it over the six foot drop off and everything was fine after that. <laughs> and that's, on that topic, uh, that, that's a really good question. Obviously something that we're continuing to monitor as well, but it's a, it's a tough one because it's a pretty, <laughs> pretty rugged area in there now. And, and, you know, on the one hand, we don't, we want to leave it open because it's one of the most probably unique places in Oregon mm -hmm. City. On the other hand, we, we've got to keep a pretty close eye on yeah. that. We've um, we've had that evaluated by the the agency that does our risk management, basically our city's liability insurer, and they've they've you know at this point anyway they've allowed us to continue to leave it open to the public, but we have posted over the last couple of years or so uh, some signs, basically warning people that it's a it's an active it's an active slider, and you know there's things that could be uh, present, like falling, falling rocks, and dangerous situations. So we've we've posted that on the two entry and exit points of the park, the main, the main above and below. That you know, beware if you're coming through. So, but definitely something we're keeping an eye on, and I hope that we can find a way to keep that open. <coughs> it's getting more and more tricky. Do you guys have any other yeah, questions? somewhere I've got. There's places where it's you know you wouldn't want to be if there was a, even a moderate sized earthquake, you know, because there's there's rocks are going to come off those walls. So, mm -hmm. and uh, there is one section where it parallels the asphalt, and uh, that was the last area that there was a major rock fall. But you know, if you look at the debris fields below that rock wall, you know it's went in the past, and it's you know there's places where. 
the bottom piece of rock came out and the column continues up and it's sticking out from the cliff, but you know, 20, 30 feet up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a it has potential to be dangerous, but 90% um, or better of the time it's, it's safe because things move primarily when things are lubricated by excess rain. So that's, that's the only thing keeping it safe though for general use because people don't go in there when it's nasty weather for the most part. No, they walk when it's nice outside. Yeah, people don't even walk their dogs sometimes when it gets bad enough. Uh, so. I thank you for coming here tonight. I think we do have some common uh, concerns, issues, goals together, I think, are both our committees. So I think this will be a good uh, working relationship that we can have. Uh, what's your guys, how do you guys work with Metro and some of their land that they own? And then, of course, Metro has lots of uh, resources as far as uh, natural resource type uh, uh, managers. Oh. Um, I, sh I should throw this out. I told Pete about it, but uh, I was talking with Brian Vaughn, the head ecologist there at Metro, and they had made a cooperative agreement with the Kanema neighborhood to remove ivy and plant trees and so on and improve their parks. And I said, why don't you include Waterboard Park? And he said, why, sure. So that's in the offing. That's good, because wow. they're covered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to either spray or have a massive volunteer thing. Uh, over in Westland, they had really good results with spraying on ivy, and they had, but they had people that knew what they were doing and applicating. They could go around native stuff that you didn't want to spray and still get almost all the ivy, and it's impressive. You know, you can still see the dead ivy up there. It was last summer that they did that. It's quite when impressive. those trees go, so will the the rest of the uh, area. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The, well, the ivy on the trees does increase the possibility of damage from right. wind and ice and so on. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't generally directly, they're not parasitic on the tree, but they do grow on the tree and block <laughs> one eye, sunlight to the rest of the forest and so on, mm -hmm. as well as choke out most of the native plants on the ground. So, Mayor? Because you were on that topic, I wanted to mention that uh, Metro's bond pays for procuring property for open spaces. It doesn't pay for maintenance, and that is a challenge for Metro. Uh, I wanted to let you know that on May ballot, they're going to be requesting a, a levy for maintenance. Uh, they estimate it's about an average of $20 per year per, per household, so it's not a, it's not a heavy levy. Uh, uh, and my, my hope is to pass is if there's a lot of Concern about coming through a period where we're in a recession and so forth, and uh, the impacts on levies on that. But mm -hmm. you seem to be pulling out. But one of the mayor, you mayor, would you just got reminded? Would you mind just <laughs> popping up to the microphone <laughs> so that gets recorded? I tell everybody to talk in the microphone. All I wanted to do was uh, <laughs> indicate when you said Metro has it covered, they really don't. It's a uh, it's a challenge for them and they will be seeking support yeah. from the voters to maintain those open spaces. Bonds do not pay for maintenance, they pay, pay for procurement. Yeah. Thank you. I would just like to Thanks. piggyback on that. Um, they, Metro does have a restoration enhancement grant program for uh, uh, that sort of um, invasive species removal and enhancement, but it does require the time and energy that's taken to submit a grant application and then a department to manage that grant once it comes in. So, yeah. We've also been uh, on on the same topic. The we we've mentioned this at at least at our last meeting. I think Larry Potter uh, gave you a report about the invasive species removal projects that we've been doing um, in partnership with. Metro staff and the Greater <coughs> Oregon City Watershed Council at uh, in the Newell Canyon area and also in the Kanema area. Of course, those that join <coughs> Metro's property, so they have an interest there. That's you know that that's their connection. Um, but you know, hopefully, we can continue to look at even some of those types of partnerships as well because we we the invasives at Water Board are. It's, it's a huge, yeah. huge problem. We need so. to pull all our resources together. Yeah. <laughs> so with the success of these, uh, this recent program with the, the Watershed Council and Metro, maybe we can, you know, continue some of that uh, momentum and, and take it into, I think, I think Waterboard Park is, is, you know, right there on the priority list with, with the others. So. Well, the, it's definitely moved up the priority list with Metro uh, due to that one conversation I had. Um, I will say the uh, Metro bond measure 
covers uh, a variety of things, including increasing public access, which has been a real uh, limiting factor for use of their properties, as well as things like invasive removal, um, habitat enhancement, and, and so on. So it's going to be a, a good life. Like at the Clackamas River Basin Council, where I sit on the uh, on the board there, we approved supporting that measure and we wrote a letter to them. Uh, so that's something that we could all consider <clears throat> because, uh, you know, it's only, we only have another month or a little more before that election and they need all the support they can get at this point in time. <clears throat> well, it sounds to me like there's several things that we can work collaboratively on or issues that we, that we share interest in yeah. both committees. Um, I'm thinking that at this point we probably need to, I feel like I made a kind of a list regarding one water board park, volunteerism, um, the master planning with maybe native plants and then working on invasives in some of, some of our other parks. But I think that if we bullet some items and then get together with a regular work session to come up with, you know, maybe not so formal, but a can we do a casual work session where we just kind of sit and talk and work through some of the stuff and figure out how to strategize and leverage both committees to tackle some of these issues? I think that would be really beneficial for all of us. We can send you our goals, you know, for mm -hmm. yeah. that are ongoing, and that'll give you an idea of the things that we're working on. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited. I really yeah. would like to talk to Bob about the volunteerism piece and. I'm very interested in that dark sky. I think that sounds very fascinating. Yeah, it's just a matter of um, asking people to buy the, the correct lamps that reflect, you know, you get a better energy use because it reflects everything mm -hmm. down rather than, you know, just Especially, having, yeah. you know, a frosted glass over it and it goes in all directions, you know. Does that work for baseball fields and? It could. <laughs> it could. Actually, those locations. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking. Those are expensive yeah, to replace, but it could work. Yeah. As you know. We're if, yeah. About that. You know, if you put in something saying, "Let's do this on all future," you know, activities, and if we build another baseball field, we could have that sort mm -hmm. of lights. Right. Mm -hmm. They are more efficient generally. Because we do have some sports youth sports groups who are looking at fundraising for some of those mm -hmm. lighting projects. The uh, most of the the sport field lighting companies, their their new lighting is is very is much directional. Nice. It, it doesn't disperse as much and pollute. It's it's gotten really good with the technology. Yeah, Excellent. that's good to hear. Yeah, I can uh, definitely get Bob <coughs> to give a talk, and I'm sure Shaw Shaw yeah. was planning on getting a presentation for our next meeting, and uh, I'm sure she could give that to you as Maybe well. Maybe you can share that with us, and if there's anyone who's interested, would it be okay for? Yeah, it's what the second Wednesday, I believe. Yeah, second, second Wednesday, Wednesday of every month. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I should talk with her and make sure she's still on track with that, but she said she was uh, going to do that. Great. So, and, uh, and as far as volunteerism, that should definitely be shared with the parks. And I, I think that there's real potential there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at um, Marius Young, they got a volunteer volunteer coordinator even, mm -hmm. you know, which is rare, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, but they did a real good job, you know, and uh, that yeah, yeah. reduces the stress level on park staff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, if, if the people are properly just directed, they can be very effective. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, working with the Clackamas River Basin Council, we get projects like the Down River Cleanup with well over 300 volunteers on a single day. So it can be done. You just have to plan for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, there's Boy Scouts that would love to help that I know about. They can deliver up to 200 Boy Scouts mm -hmm. for a single project. That's and, great. Uh, you know, some of some of them, not all of them, would of that number would be willing to do something more ongoing as well. I also know I always say this, but our service clubs in in our community, we have a lot of a lot in conjunction working with the Boy Scouts. They're doing a huge cleanup coming up, and so I know that we could use that as a resource as well. Anyway, I know there's lots of ideas. Anyway, we can, you know, if if you would like me to come up with a date on that for uh, those uh, different people, and uh, uh, I. Personally, I have um, a lot of horticulture and botanic knowledge. I can give presentations on invasives. It's a you know much broader issue than most people realize. Mm -hmm. It's not just a few plants. Mm -hmm. There's 
ones that are a little bad, and there's some that are really bad. <laughs> I think you I know? have a few of those in my yard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of them may be in your yard. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, for instance, the Singer uh, Creek Park has um, lesser celandine, which is a really nasty one. And it's taken over half the park. The other park, half the park has none because it just showed up there and who knows when. But you can only control it for about one month a year because it's a spring vernal plant that grows. And as soon as it starts to warm up, it dies down. And it's, mm. by the time it does that, which is May, it's too late to do any control measures. I think I have that in my yard, too. You might. It's a little yellow flower yep, I do have a with lot slightly variegated leaves. Yeah, it's a real nasty Yes, one. it is. So it's the one on. Uh, it's one of the uh, ones to hate for the uh, <laughs> uh, soil and water people. It's on their list of ones to hit hard now before it spreads any more than it already has. Mm. It's not like dandelions where it's too late to do anything about it. In other words, it's like in that park. It's in half the park and not the rest of it. Mm -hmm. mm. It just hasn't had time to spread that mm -hmm. far. But mm -hmm. that'd be interesting as well. So anyway, that's the sort of thing that you. you know we need to get this knowledge through. And it put into practice mm -hmm. at you know the everyday level in the park system. Great. Okay. I think there's a lot of work we can do. So right. we'll get some things set up and and then. Yeah. Well, how, I, mean, I guess we can talk about that later too about how often we would like to meet. Is it supposed to be just annually? It sounds like to me that we could meet a whole lot. Our our, our bylaws process. state at least once a year, okay. but it's really up to the. To the well, members. you know, if there's work to do, let's do yeah. it. You know. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure that uh, mm -hmm. the two that I've been mentioning, Jerry Herman would be a third one. He mm -hmm. likes to talk about natural habitat values. Um, and uh, so he, I know that he's interested in presenting as well. And uh, of course, Eric Carr is the one that's from the um, soil and water. And uh, he could uh, <coughs> you know, give us more of an idea of what they can do, because they do have grant programs. Yeah. Okay. Else? Any other questions? Oh. Thank you both very, very much. Thank you. Yeah, you're sure mm -hmm. welcome. And it's interesting to know what you're working <coughs> on. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then, as we mentioned, even though it's not on your agenda, I thought I, I'm, I was guessing Bob would probably give an update oh, under yes, his member report. So, since Pete was here, we could just kind of, if you don't mind, we could just kind of jump to the South End concept plan update for a, a few minutes or whatever. Whatever the two of you might want to mention is going on with that. The pleasure of the committee. I don't mind waiting until that agenda item, but I can do it now. I don't uh, think it's it's not really on the agenda. It was just a, a report well, thing. So it, I think it's probably all right to, to just do kind of now. jump to that. All right. All right. Great. Tell I'm us what's going to go have home and have dinner. Thank okay, you, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> it was a pleasure right. to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. How do you spell your name? Uh, my first name is D R Y O N. Huh? My mother spelled it that way to match my last name, which is B O Y C E. <laughs> but, but I found out there's three people in the United States with that stuff. Oh. <laughs> wow. It's pretty rare. There's a plant named Bryony, which, if you know what our cucumber vine is, man root, um, it's the European edition of that. So and it's spelled just like my name. <laughs> so you remember that. That's perfect. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Brian. And we'll, we'll, uh, I'll let you know uh, on those different topics and so on. Great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I can give a brief introduction about the part, the uh, South End uh, concept plan, and then. Um, and Bob can uh, give his perspective as our representative. I understand he's been giving you some updates on the planning process. Um, we uh, are about a, I want to say, uh, three quarters of a year into this planning process. And um, we have a planning consultant uh, who is facilitating the public involvement portion as well as the planning process, uh, Kogan Owens Kogan. And they are um, helping us and our citizen advisory committee of 18 people um, develop a concept plan for the south end area of Oregon City. And I've got a map over here if it would be helpful. Show you where that is. <clears throat> so, want me to hold it? Yeah, if you would. Um, helps to turn it the right way. <laughs> 
Rule number one. Yeah. <laughs> <Or yeah. laughs> so um, this map's getting pretty dinged up. But um, this is our um, most basic map, which shows the uh, area that we're taking a look at as part of this concept planning process. Um, this legend up here shows that the thick gray boundary out here where you drop off the edge of South End Road and go down to May Road down here, that's the urban growth boundary. Um, the red dotted line represents this current city limits. And the area that we're taking a look at is essentially between the current city limit and the urban growth boundary. Um, and all of that area needs to be concept planned before any land can be proposed for annexation by a private property owner. And a concept planning process is just this kind of jargon term that we use. Mm -hmm. We could call it a, you know, a South End neighborhood plan, whatever. Basically, um, the plan that we develop for the future development of this area has to be accepted by uh, Metro and by the Department of Land Conservation and Development um, and, a, but, and adopted by the Planning Commission and City Commission. Um, and we're shooting for having a draft plan uh, at the end of 2013. We don't have a uh, concept yet. Um, we're in the stages of developing some scenarios. Uh, we had an open house on uh, uh, February, uh, when was that, 17th, I believe, um, where we just um, had about 110 people come and draw on maps and give us ideas of what they would like to see out there. Some people don't want to see anything at all. We understand that. It's a valid point. Um, and some people want better trail connections. Some people want sidewalks. Some people would like to see some limited uh, commercial development. Um, and some people would like a greater diversity of housing and, and parks and that sort of thing. Um, but I want to stress that all of that development that might occur um, could happen between you know five to thirty years from now so this is not an overnight thing this is something where the city adopts a plan and then private development occurs incrementally as annexations are submitted to the city for approval and future development occurs um, so uh, that's where we're at right now um, our next meeting is going to be uh, April 13th <coughs> at McLaughlin Elementary School and it's uh, we're going to be sending out flyers um, <coughs> tomorrow in fact so we we're hitting mailboxes for all properties within the study area <coughs> and three neighborhood associations that touch South End Road so Hazel Growth Westland Farms South End Neighborhood Association Kinema Neighborhoods Association and all properties 300 feet from South End Road, whether you're in the city or not. So clear down to the intersection with the uh, 99E. And we've been getting great response at these meetings so far. Um, the uh, open house workshop on April 13th, that's a Saturday. And we're actually going to be presenting three sort of scenarios for future land use and getting comments on those and what people think of them. So, Bob, what, what do you well, think? Well, <coughs> uh, the things so far that uh, have Im impressed me is the, uh, the high interest, especially of the residents from the South End area. Uh, the large attendance, you mentioned uh, over 100 people at uh, at least two of the events that I've attended. And I've, I've tried to just listen to their, what they're saying in the feedback, and uh, I hear a lot of concerns. And I talked to Pete yesterday about this, and he assures me that it's, it's a normal occurrence. And any time you go through any kind of land use uh, planning or concept planning, concerns about zoning, concerned about uh, higher taxes, the possibility of higher taxes, uh, land use. Uh, you hear things about uh, improvement of streets, parks, and transportation. Uh, people want input. They really want input in what's going to happen to their land. That's obvious. 
uh, I'm impressed with the the, uh, the long range planning that has to happen before development can really take place. You know, five, ten, fifteen years before really anything can really happen out there, and all the different uh, organizations that must participate must agree or adopt a final plan. The City of Oregon City and Metro and uh, the state, perhaps, is that one of the groups who, one of the, uh, yep. one of the uh, entities that has to ultimately agree? So it's uh, really a long-term endeavor, and uh, I've learned a lot just by listening and watching and, and uh, trying to keep up to speed with what's going on. Uh, but there's a, a, a lot of interest, and I'm sure there will be packed house on the 12th and, and 13th of April. The meeting's coming up. And so I would encourage people to attend if they have an interest and want to participate in the in the uh, ongoing activities. I would um, add that uh, we have a, an active website, uh, www.southendconceptplan.org. Um, all information about upcoming meetings and all the meeting materials and summaries of previous meetings are on that website. Um, we've just uploaded uh, the 20 different maps that people worked on at the last workshop. Um, and uh, that was really fascinating because it was a, essentially it was a planning <coughs> game or exercise where uh, you were given colored squares and uh, each table of six to eight people was asked to place at least ten land use values on a map. Um, and uh, the team that had the most points at the end, you know, won for that and then people voted on the various maps so there was a most popular category and then every one of them was very creative. Uh, there were pieces of string for trails, um, green space for parks and all sorts of things and uh, I think it was a very useful exercise because it helped people understand what it really takes to plan for a complete community um, and um, the uh, concept plan that Metro um, helps to fund has to have all these components. It uh, has to have a housing component, a transportation component, a parks and open space and natural resources component, fire and emergency services, and all the infrastructure pieces. So sewer, water, mm -hmm. storm water, all of that is part of a concept plan even though it's done at a very uh, I would say 30,000 foot level. It does create the basis for an adoption into the city comprehensive plan so that if and when annexation occurs and ultimately development occurs, it guides and creates the document that the community wants to see out there. And, uh, and I think that's the value of the concept planning process. Um, it, the process is funded through the Metro construction excise tax which is a tax on building materials that are paid and allows you to do this kind of activity uh, before annexation takes place, which is great. I've mentioned this to mm -hmm. Pete on two or three occasions that I'm, I'm surprised at the lack of public information, although a great effort is going into this, but the newspapers haven't picked up. I haven't read one article in the Oregon City paper uh, about this process going on, and right under our noses, so to speak. There are hundreds of people involved in this with, you know, great interest in what happens to their, to their, uh, their property. Mm -hmm. Anyway, one of these days maybe a reporter will show up and take an interest in this. Yeah. I think our last article, uh, Raymond Randleman from the Clackamas Review did about, I want to say it was two months back, but in time for this uh, upcoming open house, we need to get the word out again. Yeah. So we've, did, we've done press release <laughs> and that sort of thing. So, But uh, uh, please do encourage your friends and neighbors and uh, colleagues to get involved in this process. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. I have to say Thanks. I think you've done an outstanding job of getting the word out from some of our school events and oh, our yeah. families knowing and the Family Focus Forum you were there. And 
Oh, yeah, no, that's been, right. Yeah, you guys have yeah. done an amazing job. <laughs> yeah. The website, the interactive website, I actually went on and completed the survey. Oh, excellent. Good yeah, for you. So I yeah. think it's you're doing a lot of work. I think it's yeah. Getting yeah, we are going to um, now that we're kind of moving into the scenarios phase. Um, we'll be once we have a the three scenarios mapped out. Um, we're going to reopen that that uh, online interactive thing, but with a more focus on which of the scenarios, and you can get to comment on those. Nice. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's kind of like SimCity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not as cool. <laughs> but it's the real life version of it. Though. Yeah, yes. it's a real life version. Yeah. Oh, it's it's not a virtual one. So thank you for all you're doing. Yeah, it's good. Any questions? Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Pete. Thank you, Bob. Good info. All right. Next on our agenda is Park Day event, 2013. Yes. All right. Well, I. Brian, do you want to talk about it? notes there. I know. Okay. Well, I always have notes. I've got <laughs> just a plethora of notes here. Yeah. Sure. Good. <clears throat> well, we met uh, <clears throat> about three weeks ago now, and uh, four of the six committee members. And um, for the committee's approval, information, etc. I sent I sent this out. I sent a couple documents out to everybody, and I I'm, I trust that you got it and took a look at it. But um, following. Um, Bob's recommendation, the the age old and always uh, viable Kiss principle, keep it simple, stupid. Um, we're trying to keep it simple. All right. So we're we're in the beginning phases, but there I, th I think is a lot of uh, hope and uh, really trust that it's going to come come together. We've even reserved the park, Rivercrest Park, for the tenth of uh, of August. So. Um, it's kind of jumped a little bit ahead of, of the, of the, you know, the content of the meeting or, uh, you know, we did talk about a, a little bit of a broader aspect, but then sh really didn't spend too much time on that and, uh, narrowed it down to, to Rivercrest Park, um, just for its ability to offer a lot of different areas and spaces and things to do for families when they get there. And um, I, I emailed out those two documents and one of them was the little sketch that I, I made um, on uh, Rivercrest and just pointing out the spray park there and the, uh, there's a little ball field there and of course the tennis uh, courts and an area to play volleyball or some other sport. They've got a picnic area there at the Rivercrest. Etc. So uh, we see that day being one. Uh, by the way, here we go. Mayor uh, left too early. Um, this is goal number four, and, and many other goals of the city. But uh, this day being a, an opportunity to maintain communications with citizens and f facilitate citizen participation. So, and also Brian. Brian has mentioned that several times and I think it's really important you know we want to have a fun day we want to have a day where families can have fun and and, uh, and just uh, you know enjoy the hopefully great day on August 10th but but we also want to spread the news about Oregon City Parks and and we need to lay that foundation and 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 that plan through through various ways we will get the word out like we talked about um, sort of, if you want to call it marketing, uh, you know, at, at the uh, farmers market and the Octa event, etc. Trail news, uh, getting this, getting a build up, and not only not only a build up of the event itself, but also information that we can give out about parks at those at those venues as well as we build up to that event on the tenth. But uh, hopefully everybody was okay. Mike's, Mike is not here to defend himself, but certainly Bob <laughs> is. Uh, everybody's okay with their assignments and just let us know uh, about that. 
Um, I did the the co I coordinated with staff there, and uh, I think I've I've uh, I've wrestled uh, e either uh, Scott or Denise or both to being there. I mean, just again, we planned on a very uh, s small commitment for staff, but I think it would be appropriate the staff would be there to kick off the event, and um, you know, and then s just. Whatever, whatever support we could get from them. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that uh, I know they want to be there, and that would they would provide a great um, value, I think, in being there as well. I'm planning to be there, and not just gonna not just gonna ditch out after. Yeah, after and I, yeah, so. Scott. I'm sure you're gonna bring your family yeah, if they're. That's right. You know, you know, there's it's gonna be a great event. Um, I can tell. I can tell. Uh, when I talked to, to Scott and Denise, I could tell you guys that uh, all of our ideas were well received. Uh, the geocaching idea is a great idea, Don, and and uh, you know I think about that. All all of the things we've talked about at that table, uh, I I really do believe in in having uh, you know Lisa on the committee and and others who know people and know definite people that can volunteer and would be ideal volunteers to run. Uh, the, the volleyball or the the kickball or the wiffle ball, whatever we decide to. But certainly, you know, I think we met a really uh, uh, engaging gentleman this evening that that would do a great job running a, a bicycle safety course or a bicycle safety, you know, something, whatever. But uh, they like that idea too, Don. When I met with Scott and Denise, and and um, I I think it's fantastic and it's a great summer um, thing. To do you know to get your bike in shape and and uh, I guess I guess later in the later in our business we're going to talk maybe about our uh, applicant but uh, I think all the things that we talked about during that meeting are are going to to uh, be well supported and I think it's going to be a, a great event um, but just going quickly down the games and activities Lisa's Lisa, you can give us an update there on that uh, as, as far as things that you've uh, looked into, the volleyball, um, uh, the, the wiffle ball or kickball, and the three-on-three -three tournament, the basketball tournament. I'm sure you've made some contacts with those. Okay. You want that update now, or you want me to... You want to go through this? I just have made contact yeah. with a couple of folks. Yeah. They're interested. They've got the date. They want to take it back to their board or their coaches, and then they'll get back to us on... You know what their availability is. They like specifics. That's yeah. thing. Tell us what you want us to do, and we'll we'll make it work. Was that the basketball? Yeah, that was basketball yeah. and volleyball. Oh, and volleyball. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And then um, and the other two are kick, service groups. Like so I'll talk okay. to Optimus or Rome Now that we have a date, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then Don, I don't know how much more uh, you've looked into that bicycle safety clinic, but we we spoke with Adam this evening, and uh, and although uh, you know we didn't. Bro uh, broach that subject, um, you know, and and there's still there's still a uh, I don't know, Scott. Do you want do do we want to make a recommendation during this meeting on on our new applicant? That way we can talk maybe a little bit more freely. <laughs> yeah, or that's not. up to you. That's the the next item on the agenda is to discuss that yeah. potential appointment. So you can. You, you can jump, ahead jump around if you want. Yeah. It's up to the commission. Yeah, let's go let's go ahead and do that. Alright. We're gonna table this one for a moment about the event and we'll move to the track vacancies. Can we you guys don't have to help me guide me through this. Are we just making a motion or are we just gonna do Well yeah, we yeah, we had a, a great uh, interview with uh, Adam. I'm sorry, his last name. Turned on. Sorry. We got it. Yes. And um, you know, I, I'll I'll say I'm impressed, and and uh, I'm very comfortable in in um, recommending that he be a part of this committee, and and we agreed, Don, for your information, when you weren't there, that that all of us were in in, in agreement, strong agreement, I believe. Am I right yeah. in saying that? Yeah. Strong agreement. So um, I would I would expect uh, that uh, Adam should be his name should go forward to the mayor <coughs> for a for a spot on this committee. Do 
Do we have to do a formal motion on that? Typically on this one you do. This okay. is a little so, bit more of a formal type of thing. Yeah. Right. yeah. So formal motion. I like to make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Make a recommendation to the mayor to. So I'll forward that on and then that okay. process will take place. Great. Thank you. So in the. So back now. Let's that. go back to the <laughs> parks event. Seeing that and also we have no, no uh, misgivings about actually assigning duties to people who aren't present in meetings. We'll uh, talk <laughs> about Adam running that bicycle safety. I think we better hope <laughs> <course>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So did he say anything about changing that meeting that they're having? Yes, and he, yeah, he is in charge of that meeting, so he's, he can do whatever he wants. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a great Because I think somebody point. from here should, and I'm willing to, as long as they move it to a date I can go to, but somebody from here should be involved in that, <clears throat> and I'm willing to, but I think they're going to... Um, they, they, they could get some traction and, and I think that um, some of the things they're going to explore are things that we've explored. Yeah, and, and we specifically asked him about those things and also how it relate. And I was thinking about you also when I asked him how his ideas related, related to economic development, one of the city's goals. So it's really a great answer and a good conversation we had. So if you would continue to coordinate with, uh, or st maybe start coordinating, I don't know, when can we do that? <laughs> Let's, well, we the, mayor, the mayor was there, so we can, you <laughs> Once know, we it can. it's official, we can yeah. we'll get word. I'd like, to, I'd like to keep moving on that, and, and I'm sure there'll be an update next, next uh, meeting. But, uh, and then the geocaching too, Don, which I think is a fantastic idea, if you want to. If you want to just go ahead and plan on the 10th of August, if you've got a contact for that. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Um, the more I researched it, the more <clears throat> it became not as, I wasn't as romantically involved <coughs> as I was in the beginning. Um, I think that it, the largest meeting I could find, the like most current website I could find, actually, I think the last current event was 2008 or something I saw on it. Um, and there are little groups here and there that are having little pizza get-togethers and stuff and kicking off an event. But when I look at the people or the amount of people that were responding, they weren't really in great numbers. Um, so <clears throat> I'm not ruling out the, ge the geocache in my mind. I, I think that the geocaching could happen over time. And it doesn't need to be on the 10th. It could mm -hmm. be prior to and kicked off before and you bring your card or yeah. whatever. Okay. Um, so some of the ideas that came up were... Um, who talked to a couple people about it was, um, you know, it, in geocaching is going to require that somebody has a little electronic device, a, a GPS unit, or the software on their smartphone to be able to get it to, 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 to run. Um, and so we were thinking, well, are there other ways that we could do this not having to require a GPS unit? And so one of the things that came up in several places I looked were the unique punches, <clears throat> you know, you can just we could have a card with it, it's a map or whatever, mm -hmm. and and go hang it on a chain somewhere in that park or, or wherever on, on that property, um, a punch, and they can come back and show us that they punched, you know, the the card, and um, you know, what would they get? Well, there's we could get donations from business or whoever, you know, to get some kind of incentive going. We did mock up a sticker <coughs> that yeah uh, they could get possibly, mm -hmm. um, like and. Uh, so I think that's still something worth pursuing. I just don't know. I think geocaching is a little pie in the sky a little bit, unless we were able to tap into a really active group that happens to be here in Oregon City. Mm -hmm. And I've yet to find one, but I'm not going to stop looking. Um, so um, um, let's see. Um, one of the conversations that I had um, involved... I don't really want to take it too far down that road, but involved the ripple effect, and that um, the, the kickoff, the official kickoff or grand opening for that. When I talked to Drevo, um, we were wondering whether it could coincide with our parks day, um, because I think that it's a pretty cool way to um, the, the sculpture itself. I think is a pretty good way to to draw attention to the to an undervalued or underappreciated resource, which is all that waterfront property, um, you know, mm. between the, the falls and, and all the way to, to, to Milwaukee. Um, you know, and that um, I think the sculpture for a lot of reasons will cause people to think or maybe rethink the value of all of that and what Oregon City really has. 
Um, and I, I, I've always said it and I'll continue to say it, that I think in my conversations with people, um, it's really underappreciated that there, we have a confluence of two major rivers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we do have a couple parks there. Mm -hmm. But um, it's one of the rarest places in all of Portland that we have that much water line, you know, and it, and it really is not that developed. So one of the thoughts was that maybe we could, um, you know, encourage people to travel a certain route, you know, or a route of their own choosing. Combine that with the punches and the mm -hmm. you know, card with the maps. Um, we wouldn't have to staff those areas. We could just hang a chain and a, and a punch mm -hmm. on it if mm -hmm. that's what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then another thought that came up, which I really like this idea, um, but I haven't figured thought it through completely, was to do a um, a bicycle poker run. Mm -hmm. And have the bicyclists, you know, maybe start out at one park or whatever, but be able to go to different parks and, and pick up a card or pick up a punch or whatever and encourage the cycling aspect of it. Um, and uh, everybody that I talked to about that was pretty pumped about it, but I think I was really preaching a choir. Um, <laughs> so, um, anyway, those are my thoughts on that. I, you know, I, I really would like to do geocaching. I think it's pretty cool, pretty fascinating. Um, but I haven't figured out how to tap into a main vein, mm -hmm. you know, on that. Okay. So. Okay. Um, and then I have not I have yet to go to uh, any of our um, uh, ideas there we had for um, donations for our, bar our barbecue. Oh, excuse um, me. Um, I believe that um, we love Clean Rivers. Um, that I don't make it official, but uh, I shouldn't even have said that. Strike that. I believe there's a couple nonprofits um, that have indicated they may be interested in buying all these stickers. Um, we love Oregon City. Okay. Yeah. So they'll pay for all the stickers? Yeah. Wow. Great. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Cool. So Don and I have got a little bit of work to do, um, just coordinating to get the uh, the food on site there, and I, I'm, I'm, we're relying on the good graces of a number of business owners or uh, chains or what have you. But um, we'll continue to do that within the next uh, within the time frame of the next meeting, and I'm I'm definitely going to be active in that because next meeting is April, and before you know it, it's going to be August. So. Um, and then I think the, probably the biggest thing is the booth planning, and, and um, part of part of this booth also is should be incorporated or will be incorporated into uh, the other places where, where we are going to market this this event. In other words, the the brochure. What does the brochure look like? Or maybe we have the standing brochure of the city available. And we continue to modify that if we think we need to modify it. But we have that available at the at the farmers market. And at, uh, uh, what were the other ideas here? Um, the concert in the parks, yeah, and the Octa event. And uh, you know, if we do set up a booth at at the farmers market, what is it going to look like? I think we really need to talk about that. So you know, Mike, Don, um, that's actually that's actually marketing. So. Uh, Don, Mike, and, and Brian, and Bob, the booth planning and setup operation. Um, I, I, I don't think it needs to be a ton of work, but some, some level of effort and just thinking needs to go into that. How are we going to broadcast this information? Uh, what type of information are we going to want to get out besides the specific things that we're going to be doing on the 10th of August? Uh, you know, the events. What, what do we want to tell them about the parks? And what do we want the brochure to look like? Do we want it just to be the brochures that we currently have in Oregon City, or do we want to expand on those? Um, so, not not rocket science, but you know, there's some work to do there. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, the marketing through the bumper sticker, Facebook. Um, I thought since Mike. Uh, was I think he was right in the middle of creating a Facebook page for the dog parks. I think maybe he has some good ideas or, or abilities there. It's not too difficult to create a Facebook page, but um, I I think we hit the go button on the trail news as far as getting it in the trail yes. news that event. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's gonna that that deadline's in April, and we've already met that deadline. 
but then the, the, the ones that we really need to think about here under marketing, brochure, et cetera, are, are the farmer's markets and the concert and the park. What do we want that to look like? Do we want that just to be maybe one or two people with uh, some information, handing out information, or do we want to have a booth? Um, at a concert in the park or the farmer's market, you know, and an educator like Bob maybe um, who can elaborate on, uh, who's used to standing up in front of <laughs> large groups of people and uh, mm -hmm. has the great ability to elaborate and... Uh, Flattery will get your nose. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's why, you know, we've got Bob in that booth. We, we're going to use Bob's skills as an educator to educate, further educate the public. You know what I, I not to break into your your uh, piece here, but where does the booth come from? Yeah, where does Do it come from? Do we construct the booths? Is that part of the process? No, I think when we say booth, um, I have access to some 10 by 10 pop-ups that are pretty pretty good shape. Yeah. Good. That's and then we would, yeah. yeah. Because I, I wonder about, as an old athletic director, I remember all the people coming in with all these great ideas. They were wonderful ideas, yeah. and I supported them all. But when it came time to build the booth, we were short of personnel. Yeah, yeah. So no, I think table and a table and a, a cup, table, right? When, when we're really booth is kind of a wrong, the wrong approach. What we were really talking about is how best to put together a ten by ten space without it looking cluttered and without it looking naked. Um, but and that's there's a, there's an idea for doing that. I yes. Mean, Right. Good. And then I had also questions about all the equipment. I read your, um, mm -hmm. your material. Where does that equipment come from? Is that does the city have that now? The sound system. The sound system. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's some of the some that's of those the, things. Yeah. These are the things that keep me awake at night. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I guess, if if I could just interject for a moment here too, while we're on that topic. So when Brian came and met with with Denise and I to pin down the date and, and look at the idea and kind of get some of the, the details moving forward. Um, we talked about what the city would be able to commit for resources, what we don't have, what, we, what we're able to do, et cetera. And so, you know, what I, what I agree to, and, and I want to reiterate, you know, the, the comments that I've made being realistic about our staff time to, to do another event in no way have been indicative of my support of the event. I think, I mean, I'm just listening to all the details and all the work that is kind of lining up here. And when Brian came and met, you know, the, the list that he had already put together of who's doing what and, and all that was very impressive. So I, I appreciate what everybody's doing. But th this, though we didn't plan for this event in terms of budgetarily, and because this has really just grown out of PRAC, it's your own initiative, which is, which is wonderful. Um, even though it's not budgeted, we have a little bit of discretionary money in, in our recreation budget that we might be able to use to fund some things that need to happen. Like, for example, um, and some things don't cost any additional money. They're just resources that exist. Advertising-wise, uh, putting something in the trail news, that's, that's a no-brainer. We, we, our department does that. We just make more space available for that. Um, putting it on our city website is free. Cost us a little bit of staff time, but we not not that big of a deal. And doing some things like that, um, resources that we have for the event, we will definitely make them available. Uh, sound systems, um, we could probably get some tables and chairs rounded up if we need to, and, and some things like that. You know, resources that exist that we can bring to the event. So there's probably a list that needs to be gone through and mm -hmm. you know check the boxes as to what we have and what we don't have. And then we even talked about some things like something that the city might be able to support be with a little bit of discretionary funding that, that I'm talking about um, is if you're not able to get those stickers done by a volunteer group we could probably budget you know 100 bucks 100 bucks probably buy 500 of those stickers mm -hmm. or something for example and um, uh, what else did we talk well some designing some flyers mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. and then reproducing the flyers we can do that at, you know at a very minimal uh, cost to the city and we have a graphic designer on contract that does all of our productions like the trail news and our, our really nice posters and flyers that you see us doing for for the concerts and the different activities so it'd be pretty easy for us to tap some of those types of resources so 
I made Brian aware at the meeting that we have some of those opportunities to work, you know, to work on some things and sort of what we can do and what we're not able to do, but um, just kind of keeping that in mind. Uh, and so I, I think there's still details to work out, but there's a number of things that will. But then you get into things like uh, wiffle ball and kickball, and you know somebody's going to have to round up some some sports equipment. We don't mm -hmm. have that just sitting around, so yeah. that's pretty that's pretty straightforward. I think you know it wouldn't be tough to find that and and some of those types of things. You know, so. a PE teacher or anything? I, I might. <laughs> 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 so yeah, we'll we'll be working. You know, staff will be working with with you guys on what we can do to help and. You know, I, one of the questions I, I, or one of the, I should say, question marks I put was after power hookup mm -hmm. on that on that end of the park. Do you know if we've got power on that end of the park? Which end are you talking it's about? The, um, it's the, it's the covered picnic area. We do. The one that's. That's the east. It's the only one there, isn't it? Yeah. Charmin, on Charmin. Well, is this for the PA? Yeah, on Charmin. If you don't, I have two super quiet generators. Okay. Yeah. We we have power at, at pretty much all of our picnic shelters. So we'll, you know, those are the kind of things we'll, some of them are locked up and we, we just unlock them. Uh, that's great if we've got some uh, extra generators. We might might need those at a, at a few of the events around the park. We've got, we've got some generators as well that we can loan to the event or give to the, you know, use of the event and things like that. Mm -hmm. so we've probably got the power that we need on site but if we don't we'll get some yeah. generator okay here. I have just a quick question regarding that I don't know why that made me think of it it's my facilities management so this event will be even though we are doing it and if we bring in our own stuff and have other folks in it will still be covered by the city's liability it's insurance. a city event okay yeah just make sure. I mean, okay. yeah skin okay. knees <laughs> yeah. it's it's a well, we're, we we're calling it a, a we're here. calling it a city <laughs> event. I mean, PRAC is a city committee, and, yeah. and if I had any concerns about it, I would have said so about it going forward. Right. So we're 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 okay. So should we tell them about the zip lines? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sky Dining. That one tree. You park. remember that one tree? We'll have to talk yeah. about that a little bit. <laughs> bungee, the bungee cord. So what I'll do, I'll do for uh, everybody is I'm going to resend this, and I'll, I may just indicate some. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll send. Why don't I send it to you? Okay. After I work it, and then you want if you want to work, sure. Some uh, you know, put some additional comments on it, but that that way, take this, take it as your um, your action items, you know, and and, and as far as uh, you know, if there's three or four names next to the next to the item, then coordinate with those folks and try to come up with a plan. And uh, so I'm going to send that out again, and any updated information out to everybody. And then just come back next week with a or not next month in April with a, a good update and just just realize that we're you know we're always behind the eight ball in planning because we only meet well we can meet separately. Yeah, uh, I'm actually we're going to request that we do meet yeah. again like in a week or real quick. Okay. For a couple reasons. One is we have a lot of stuff to work out, yeah. and the second one is I'm not going to be here for the next track yeah. meeting, and um, I want to contribute. Sounds good. Second week of April. Sure, we can pick a date when we're done with the meeting. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. that's a good idea. Uh, and that we could get Adam to it oh, and let him know how great. much he's doing. How <laughs> 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 Well, it all depends on. Don't scare him away before he's <laughs> enlisted. Yeah, he, he went right, her, he he went right home. <laughs> he went right home to listen to the to the uh, <laughs> access channel. <laughs> what am I get myself into? <laughs> Well, it's it's going to be pretty fast, and the and the reason why the mayor sits in those those interviews is is more than just one reason. One and one big reason is so that he's not just rubber stamping, but he already knows the guy, and he can just stamp it, which is faster than rubber stamp and better than rubber stamp, because you don't have to think. Yep. <laughs> Am I taking a risk here? <laughs> Do I trust these people? So yeah, and it, what would you think? A week's time. Of getting appointed, yeah, uh, it would probably. Let's see, Obviously. we're um, we're probably looking at. I mean, even though it's you're right about what you're saying that since the mayor's involved, it's it's fairly fast track, but there's still a process. It has to be placed formally on the commission agenda. Oh, okay, all right. And um, there's a commission meeting this coming week. They meet the first and third Wednesdays, but the agenda is already basically done and published. 
by by today, uh, unfortunately. So we're not going to get it on that one. So it'll be the the second Wednesday it's or the, the second meeting in Mar uh, April, so whatever that seventeenth. Uh, thank you. It'll probably be that date, barring any so, issues, which is before the next PRAC meeting. But informally, you can yeah, we can reach out and say, hey, yeah. you know, you want to. in case. I mean, regardless of being on PRAC, they, may, they probably want to be involved. I'm sure anyway. Blaine would want to be involved in what we're I, doing. So I, I, yeah. I'd say it's, you know, no issue to reach out and just say, hey. Yeah, I think we should invite, the, yeah, the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. That sounds good. All right. I'm excited. Yeah, me fun. too. Mm -hmm. So there'll be an email Sorry. about that date. Yes, I will. We'll make a date and then I'll send you all an appointment. Oh, what just happened? Oh. I just turned on. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the designated off-leash dog area consideration. And I'm guessing we have an update on that? Or yes. are we ha and I do you have you that. that? Thank you. Yeah, I'll give you that. Um, unfortunately, since Mike's not here, he probably would have given you this update. Um, and I think he emailed PRAC members the, the day or so after he went to the, uh, the commission meeting. So last PRAC meeting, you talked about the idea that had come up about um, considering or investigating a uh, designated off-leash park within one of our existing parks versus trying to just build a standalone dog park that we're still working on and we've kind of talked about how that might end up uh, playing out with maybe one of our future parks or something to that effect but um, you discussed that idea and Mike volunteered to go to the one of the next commission meetings and approach them and, and kind of um, explore that a little bit further so he went to the he went to the March 6th meeting I think it was uh, and just showed up uh, without being on the agenda just went under the public comments and explained that he was representing PRAC and um, talked to him about the idea of supporting you know designating one of the one of the parks as an off-leash uh, kind of a permanent off-leash site uh, the Commission seemed pretty receptive to that um, the idea specifically was about Barkley Park, not Barkley Hills, because remember we have two Barkley Parks. We have Barkley Hills is the one over kind of down below the cemetery. Barkley Park is the one over here on 12th, just down the, basically right down the hill from the Barkley School. Um, and we had talked about using that as a potential idea, um, but not that that would be the only site that might be considered. So the commission, um, and spe specifically Mayor Neely uh, at that meeting, basically gave Mike the direction of that um, why don't why don't you have Prac develop a short list of potential parks that could that could serve for that purpose and then um, kind of develop that idea a little bit and then and then bring that back to the Commission again to consider so basically yeah go ahead and if you want to keep considering this to, to do that um, and and bring back a Kind of a, a proposal to the commission about this specific park or a couple or two or three parks or whatever it might be and and how that might work and so to give something to the commission to to review and, and talk about and that was it mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of where it's at I, if you wanted to digest that and put it on as an agenda topic for the next meeting so you're ready to think about it or if you have some ideas tonight and you want to and you want to get specific whatever you want to do um, is, is up to you. Do you I mean of course we started with the Barkley Park as mm -hmm. being one of them so I think that would probably still stay on the list of the short list but are there any other parks that you would want to consider at least we can generate a few ideas tonight and then bring it back next month because I really would like Mike to be here for that I'd like to have a list of all the parks in front of me, but which we don't have right now. But. Uh -oh, just before you came on, uh, just before you came on, they, you guys gave us a pretty cool map yeah. that uh, I oh. actually have pinned up on the wall at home that had all the almost all the properties yeah. on it. Yeah. And it's, ah. was be nice to have the uh, trail news that has all the parks with all mm -hmm. their activities and venues. Is that we something we at. can get, Scott? Mm -hmm. Can we get the map that they got? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Actually, was it one of the poster sites that yeah, we did? Yeah, I remember it. giving those out to everybody. And I'm thinking that we would want one of those for our booth, Yeah, um, at least. Mm -hmm. And then I think your question is pretty good. We really would like, we're going to need to do this anyway, is create an inventory 
of the the activities that are available at each of these properties. Because um, like the idea, you know, one of the ideas on the booth was that there's just not a lot of people, myself included, who would have ever realized how many parks there are in Oregon City, let alone all the activities. Um, and I think that should yeah. be next to the map. Maybe we use those, you know. Um, the trail news is great for that. Yeah, it has them all in there. Yeah, it's. That's what I was just reaching for here was my. We have. Um, we have a list, so every every trail news, and that's exactly what you're asking about. We can we can figure out a way to you know blow this up or something for mm -hmm. different uses, but we have the park map, mm -hmm. and then on the mm -hmm. on the page opposite we have a list of the the major parks. Not every little pocket park and so forth are, are on there, but we have a little a little matrix that says you know what activities are in, or what facilities are in the parks. Uh, what types of things and, and so yeah that's so ju I guess that's just a good reminder to prac as well that that's um, I'm sure you always carry this around with you everywhere you go <laughs> in your your backpacks and your your duffel bags or whatever you have and no but uh, if you ever need extra copies of the trail news you can always let me know and we can always get you more of those to have but so we can do those for those types of things for the the park event we can definitely look at blowing up those matrix of the facilities and parks types of things and I can get I guess I would need to know who who didn't get one of those larger maps of the park um, I, don't rem I don't remember if I did but yeah I can definitely we can we can print off a bunch more I'll bring those to the next meeting nice. for everybody I think it's nice. they print? almost as big as you want <laughs> really I mean we have a it's actually right back here in our engineering department we have a big plotter we just typically do like a 36 by 24 sized is a kind of a poster size, but we can do bigger if you need them. For, I think for, the, for the booth, it would need to be, a, a, it, we could probably be bigger, but we can come yeah. back to that. We can do that. Cool. So then um, for next month then, we probably, does everyone have a trail news at home or can get a trail news? Mm -hmm. So can, 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 way out. I'm sure can grab one. Can we take a look at that and then maybe bring some recommendations back to the next meeting mm -hmm. about what you might think would be a good off-leash park? And then we can have me. a discussion about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've got the uh, recent trail news that just came out is right out here in the lobby on your way out. You might grab one if you don't have one handy at home or whatever if you didn't get one there. And I'll bring, so I'll bring. Um, You'll bring us big maps. I'll bring the large map. We'll probably just, br I have one that I use for meetings that's kind of on a display board thing that we'll tack up on the wall probably over here behind me and then you'll each have your own and then can reference the smaller, the smaller condensed version on the on the trail news as well and we'll have that information in front of us so okay. so I wonder if um, we would want to invite um, we didn't really get into our parks day with the um, gentleman that presented tonight Brian um, and invite that because if they had a booth even alongside of what we're trying to show um, if you remember the real goal of this whole pro project, natural resource booth. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we're really trying to position um, or inform the public that there is there are these resources. And one of the, the statistics that I want to go back to and find is how the, the staffing level and the research, the financial resources available for Oregon City to manage these properties is way below the national standard. It would be nice to have a graph there on hand that actually shows where we're at. And the, the booth is really kind of saying, here are the resources that the city has to manage at this point with the limited um, funds that they have. And then the resource uh, booth would also further our argument because look at all the challenges that they have identified in order to, to keep the, the parks managed, you know, just from a vegetative standpoint. <coughs> I think it's a good idea to invite them. Do you want them to come to our smaller meeting, or do you? Are you thinking would, of just having them in a booth? Not at, this point, booth. Not at mm -hmm. this point, but I think we should at least, if if that's something that everybody agrees on, we should at least reach mm -hmm. out to them sooner than later. What do you guys think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's some thought. And next time we can solidify that. Nail it down, or mm -hmm. or not. Okay. So we'll put that on. Let Mike know. Put that on the agenda for next month. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Prague meeting. <laughs> LMK. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I turned that off in the car too. How embarrassing is that?
At least it's a normal <laughs> ringtone. Glad right, it's not on camera or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, at least it's not. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the master park plan update. So the, yeah, I've been um, communicating by email about this, so this is just kind of a, a quick reminder, and if you have any questions about that or want to discuss it further, um, we, we talked about this at the last meeting. We selected a, um, a consultant to assist the city in the, the design of, of a master plan for the site. Um, uh, there, was, there are some PRAC members that are interested in being involved in that process. We are coordinating. Uh, Larry Potter is trying to get uh, a meeting set up. And also, I think I indicated this in my email to you uh, in the last couple of weeks, um, a, a little kickoff meeting to, to kind of just basically get all the issues on the table. And um, we're looking at uh, a potential tour of at least one newer RV park in, uh, what is the state, the newest state park out by like Vernonia and that area, I've just blanked out of it. Stubbs. Thank you very much, yeah. Um, we, uh, we had identified that as a good site to go and actually do a site visit with, with staff and the consultant and if any PRAC members are interested, you're welcome to come. We'll make it, uh, we're trying to get one of our uh, buses from the Pioneer Center so that it, if others want to come. And, and do a tour of that because it, it's kind of along the lines of what we're trying to do. It's a newer, and it's in a, it's in a public park. Uh, it's not a private RV facility. So I um, thought that might give us some ideas, and somebody recommended that. I think our consultant thought, thought that that would be a really good place to visit. And so uh, we're, we're putting the, the, trying to get some dates pinned down. It's hard to work out schedules. I know, um, you know, the consultant schedule, staff availability, and then uh, any of your availability that are that are interested. I'm just we're going to have to just pick some dates, and then we'll just let you know when they are. I'm just uh, telling. I, I'm just going to e be emailing to mm -hmm. everybody on Prac, so mm -hmm. uh, you can you can uh, choose to participate or not. It's it's okay. Um, but yeah, we're looking at within the next couple of weeks doing some of those things. So please, if you're interested, keep. Uh, keep an eye on your email, and I'll be I'll be letting you know as soon as we've got anything pinned down. So that's just basically kind of a general update on where we're at. And then after we get sort of some of that kickoff stuff going and, and get some uh, idea generation moving forward and, and sort of the next step type of things, then, you know, the, that's kind of when then the process just really starts working its way and, and you know, we start to churn out um, some concept plans, and we'll, we'll be bringing back at some point to, to prac meetings some some concept plans to review and, and to take a look at and give input so even if you're not able to to do the sort of the subcommittee thing you'll still have opportunities for input at at the broader prac meetings because we'll this is the, the typically you know with any kind of a master plan process or what have you will bring those back for input and um, information so that's it Thank you. All right, now on to other, is there any other general business? I don't have anything else. All right, let's do PRAC member reports then. Shall we start with Don? I kind of gave mine when we were talking earlier. <laughs> That's my excuse. <laughs> okay, perfect. Brian? I have nothing to report. Brian? Well, we had a great swimming meet uh, at the pool on the 9th and 10th of, uh, of March, and uh, I, I like the staff there. I always compliment them. They, they do a really good job, so they helped us out a lot just to just to let Scott and Denise know and, and the city know. And we did have an Olympian there, okay? He was a Turkish Olympian, though. <laughs> I was looking for... But yeah, and nonetheless, he was a I think it was ninety two and ninety six, and he swam the hundred or the two hundred butterfly and won the two hundred butterfly. I'm I'm pretty sure he won. There was another guy that was right on his heels. But uh, yeah, you never know who you're going to attract for those those meets. But so we had the younger kids swimming in the morning, and the old people like me swimming in the afternoon, or you know, early afternoon to late afternoon. And I did pretty good too. I improved my time in the 400 freestyle. So, congratulations! Yeah, thank you. 
<laughs> My report is uh, whoever calls a meeting for 7 o'clock in the morning ought to have their head examined. <laughs> 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 and I, I apologize for missing the meeting, Lisa. That's okay. But I just assumed if you put down seven o'clock, it's automatically in the afternoon or evening. I mean, who ever heard of a seven o'clock in the morning meeting? <laughs> I'm sorry I missed your meeting. That's okay. And uh, I guess you got a lot of good work done. It sounds like. So that's my report. So did you? Oversee night school, or <laughs> you know, for thirty years I drove from Oregon City to Salem. Oh, wow. In oh, wow. my job, I I uh, moved here, and my first job was was here in Clackamas County. And nine years later, I went to work in Salem, and I just didn't want to move. So I said, "Well, it's a it's a trade off. I'm, I'll I'll uh, get up at six in the morning." be at the, uh, my office at 7.30, quarter to 8. And I did that for 30 years. And when I retired, I said, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I am sorry I missed yeah. the meeting. That's all right. We'll make That's the next right. one a little later. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My uh, brain was left at home. I walked in that place, and I said, where's the meeting? There weren't any cars in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. the, the fellow said, what meeting? I said, Oregon City uh, Park and Recreation Committee. He said, I never heard of them. <laughs> he said, well, go upstairs. There's, a, there's some people upstairs. So I went upstairs, and there were two people sitting at different tables, and I knew that wasn't the meeting. <laughs> so. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> well, I just want to report that I, um, for one, will make meetings a little later, make sure they're not at 7 a.m., and um, I attended the, uh, the author um, presentation, Cheryl Strange, on, um, when was that, the end of February. It was fantastic. Packed house at the library. There were people waiting outside to take the seats that weren't filled. So it was, it was a great event. It was a really good event. Very happy about that. I'm sure our, I'm, our library director, Maureen Cole, would love that you're reporting at a PRAC meeting about her event. She gets... <laughs> She would I love that. It. It I'm going to point that out so yeah, she can come back and watch it. Yeah, that. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um, and then also, I just, again, along the lines of the pool, we're going to have a summer meal site at the pool this summer. So I'm super excited to try that event again to where some kids will be able to have um, a free lunch. So anyone 0 to 18 can eat for free at the pool beginning, I think we're starting at July 8th, and it'll go until the uh, 23rd, I think, of August. So I'm super excited to have that partnership again. So are we. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess I'm still talking. Okay. So staff reports are next. Okay. Don't forget, I'm in charge. This should be pretty quick. Um, just wanted to mention the, uh, the 2013 Arbor Day event that the city is uh, hosting, uh, also in partnership with some other agencies. I put a flyer on your... Uh, at your places about that just this is just basically an FYI it's dirt it's a working with uh, yeah. working with school kids this year we're doing it at McLaughlin Elementary School and we'll be planting more trees just like we did this last year in conjunction with Mount Pleasant Elementary and planted a bunch of trays at at Chapin Park so that's the site this year um, and also just kind of as a mention with that and so our department is is involved also uh, Pete Walter who was here earlier from planning that that department and our public works so it's it's a cooperative event within the city with different departments but also with other agencies as you see on the flyer uh, this is the second year that we've done that and uh, as kind of in conjunction um, that same night at the City Commission meeting we were doing uh, there's some kind of a recognition that we're now a tree city USA certified uh, we've received our um, we passed all the requirements and so Oregon City is a tree city USA which we've been working on it was one of the goals of the Commission a couple of years ago and it's it's a, like a year-long process to get it the first time and then once you become tree city USA certified through the Arbor Day Foundation then you just maintain that by doing activities and you have to have a certain amount of budget that you show that you spend on tree planting and maintenance and different things and so that's that's all part of that uh, next is, uh, I also put at your places, the 2013 to 2015 
City Commission Goals and Priorities Handbook. So that was um, the, the commission adopted their goals for the year. It's now we're now on a two-year cycle for our budget and also for the City Commission goals to coincide with that. So um, uh, that was recently printed, and we're getting those out to all the city's boards and committees. And you know, I think Brian, you did a good job of mentioning our goals, and I know this committee is always uh, tuned in to making sure you're aligning with, with what the city commission's goals are and, and you do a good job of that. So that's just for you to hang on to for reference and, and to use. Um, and then uh, let's see, we've uh, previously emailed out, uh, you should have received an email from Denise on the activity reports for the last month. I hope that works for you to get that in that format, save some paper and it just gets it out to you uh, that way. If you ever have questions about those, please let us know. We're happy to, to talk about that. Uh, and then the last thing I have is just to mention, um, also some, somebody brought up earlier, I, th I think Don, you mentioned this, the, the Ripple legacy uh, sculpture that we've been working on. You remember a couple of meetings ago, the artist came in, Ben Dye, and he brought the big metal sculpture that was a kind of a, uh, a model for what was gonna be a bigger, uh, the, the large fish and made out of the, um, the materials that were actually pulled out of the river. And, and uh, so that's, that, uh, project is coming along nicely uh, just in the last within the last week uh, this large rock base was put in at the entrance to Clackamat Park where the sculpture is going to go so the idea is we um, they actually the artist found a, a large rock in somebody's some farmer's field or something and got a hold of it somehow and it's actually been placed <laughs> in it, it's a gigantic river rock it's like four feet Have high and about six no, feet wide or whatever <laughs> what I missed? Uh, well, you said, have you seen it? I said, no, I haven't. It just went in in the last, I think, two or awesome. three days. Uh, that's going to be the base for the for the sculpture. So then those those metal um, salmon will be attached to that, and wow. it'll you know the idea is it's connected to the river and and all that kind of thing. So it's that project is moving along, and you'll see that it'll be a it'll it, once it gets done and everything kind of gets completed. Um, I think it's going to be a really neat. It's, it's an entry point to the park. It's a really neat art piece for the whole city to enjoy. There's the whole um, you know, connection to the river and all that kind of thing. And then also with that project, since we're doing all that and it's actually going in kind of at the, the spot where the, uh, the sign that says Clackamat Park is at, our, our entry point sign, that sign is, has been there for, we think, decades and it's time to, it's time to up, update that. So I think we're gonna pull that and come up with a new sign that matches the the sculpture as the entry point to, to say Clackamat Park. So we'll be we'll be cool. working on that. And uh, that's all I've got. So I have a question: Are you off right now? Because uh, I got a bounce back on the email that you're coming back on the first. Well, so I, did you come in on your own time for this it, meeting? Well, no, I'm working today. I, I'm I took most of the week off for spring break just to spend some family time but I I carved out today to come back it just didn't say that on my email so. I just want the record to reflect yeah yeah <laughs> I well thank you no Scott problem. is awesome <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing this on my own time but it, uh, yeah but you could have opted up. out I yeah I could have yeah well, thank, thank you thank you very much Scott yeah. thank you you are awesome. Well, you guys are here and you're volunteers, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, our next meeting is April 25th. And Sorry. we're going to have another meeting prior to the mm -hmm. meeting? Yes. yes. We'll decide on Just, our, okay. yeah, after uh, the meeting. Not at 7. No, not yeah. at 7. All right, then I officially well, adjourn the seven. meeting. Maybe at 7. <laughs> 8.45. Good job. Good job, Lisa. Good job.